we're going to sing 465. Draw me nearer. 465. You're in charge, Nathan. Are you sure you, you lead? It? No, I, I can't. You can lead. Come on. I mean the real deal. I'd just be glad it was one guy with one guy and not a thousand. There would be nobody left standing, right? That's what all those grave markers are you know, at Arlington and overseas. And You know, so we basically here don't know the horrors of all that, where the generation before us do. So I knew a guy that lived through. Uh, he was a sorter at uh, a sorter at um, Auschwitz. They captured him in twelve. He got out of Hungary in the fifties, I think. He came here, and he was a good customer of mine. Uh, what is worse, I said, you must, you must hate Nazis. And uh, he told me all about it. it. It was not good. What's worse, I said, well, he said, you know what's worse than the Nazi? What, this is his order. I'm not saying this is the order, but this is the order he puts it. 
We're talking gas chamber, sorting. He was a sorter. Bodies from eyes, gold, teeth, glasses, the clothes, the hair, the whole thing. What's worse than a Nazi? Anybody know? A Russian. And what's worse than a Russian? His top of the list. On his way over, he went to the catacombs. What's worse than a Russian? Anybody know? A Roman Catholic. All right? That's the order he puts it. Jesuit in particular. Jesuits in particular. You know, that's what he claims. And, uh, and I talked to enough GIs that were on the border in Berlin. They can't even talk about it. Just how bad the Russians are. They can't even discuss it. When they were coming in, the Germans were killing them, committing suicide by the droves. They were doing that in Japan too. You know the. And the gods there are the devils. They're, they're, and, and their gods are still devils. You know, so what do you expect? It, they're, it, it's inhuman. It's just inhuman. All right, 2 Corinthians. Oh, yeah, yeah, we need to pass that out. First day of class, we got a little bit of new, new classmate, Rocco. You know, these guys, uh, you know, during the, during the war, when we say the war, we, we don't even need me. <laughs> World War II, there are places, they don't take prisoners, man. There are very few prisoners uh, at, at certain times in the war. It's just kill them all. Kill them all. Well, they would take prisoners by the millions. The, as far as I know, the Germans were still taking prisoners by the millions, even at the end of the war. They, they didn't know what to do with all these people. Millions upon millions. He, as the Bible says, heaps upon heaps. The Battle of Armageddon, they're all going to gather them up, man. Hopefully we'll be out of here by then. Right? We have hope, folks, that we'll get out of here, that we'll avoid, we'll avoid this. All right, 2 Corinthians. The reason for 2 Corinthians, one of the main reasons, there's uh, different reasons for 2 Corinthians. One of the main reasons is they churched somebody. They churched somebody in the church and they kicked him out because he was evil and wicked. But because of over much sorrow that if they didn't accept him back in, he would be shot for the rest of his life. He would never recover. And so then they leave him back. They, they ask to come back. They leave, let him back into, into the church. And then, uh, and that, we did experience that where we did church, we, we churched two people. Uh, and when we say that, we do it publicly. It's done publicly. So in uh, 30 years, let's call it 30 years. It's really 29 years. We churched two people. I think we discussed this last week. One of them specifically asked to come back, and I let them back in. That didn't last long. And uh, But we have had people that we have churched. I, I church them pri privately. It, you, you don't know what goes on. It, uh, it's bye-bye. Bye-bye. And I have to give an account for all this. Hebrews, and what chapter is that? Hebrews what? I have to give an account for everybody that ever walked through the door here. And I'll be at the judgment seat and pass the judgment on them with them. By the way, our, we shall judge. What in 1 Corinthians, what are we going to judge? We shall judge, and this is at the rebuke in, in 1 Corinthians uh, 5, we shall judge what? Angels, we're going to be judging angels. And he says, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matter? So that churching was a small matter. And so uh, uh, it's Hebrews 13. I'm going to, I'll, I'll be involved in that judgment, the specific judgment. But we are going to be judging, uh, we're, we're going to, 
we're, we're not just going to be a, a bystander. We're going to be involved in all this. Uh, and then, it, it, then it, I brought it up. If, if 1 Corinthians 5, that man did that wicked thing with his, with his stepmother, then what, was, what did Goliath do? He had relations with whom? With his mother. Because there were four other, he had four, and what were they called? What relationship were there? That's why David picks up five stones. One was for Goliath, right between the eyeballs. You know, you know people say this, that, and the other. Like, like, like we're killing the worms on the apple tree. When I went up the street, to get the poison, one of my kids asked me, was it organic? I just laughed. I told, I told the uh, guy up the street, I said, we want to put their eye, right between the eyeballs. We're not fooling around here anymore. So what we do is right between the eyeballs. There's a real, Over. There's organic pesticides, you can kill them without using Dow chemicals. We're, we're killing them suckers <laughs> between the eyeballs. <laughs> So he was having relationships with, with his mother, and they're referred to as brothers and sons. They're his brothers and sons. That's why he's having a relations with his, uh, uh, you, you, you can check out what they're called. And it, it's, it's perverted. It's just per perverts. You know, you've got these liberals that want to make Indians out to be some nice, fun-loving people. Folks, they would take the intestines, cut it open, nail it to a tree, hook it in there, and have you walk around until there ain't nothing left. I mean, just one torture. It's just, they're godless people. Third grade was torture. Third grade was strong. I had to do it twice. Yes, do it twice. Oh, yeah. Yesterday I got talking to uh, an engineer. It was a girl, and so I had a good chat with her. So I, I gave her a couple of things to give the other engineer so she gets to run a, a meeting to kind of really throw them for a loop. I, I was teaching her that there's calculus in that book, that Bible over there. Any antiquarian literature. If it hasn't been edited, it has, has uh, calculus in there. And she's, boy, I never knew that. And I was never taught that. So I, I told her to get on your clicker. I don't have a clicker. Get on your clicker. I said, do you pull up Shakespeare if it hasn't been edited? And you'll see calculus in there. It's all in there. So anyway, we had a fun time. All right, so it's written to uh, help get this guy back into the church. Uh, and he also writes it to defend, Paul writes it to defend his reputation as an apostle. By the way, uh, is anybody warm? Are we, I see, are we warm? Because I did, I did, uh, Let's click it on. Well, this thing whoops in the sweat. Well, just imagine going to it uh, 50 years ago. They didn't even have it. Thank God for the engineer that invented it. Oh. Amen. Mr. Amen to that. Mr. Carrier. He didn't invent it. But, yeah, but it would be Mr. Carrier. Yeah. He got the credit for it. He got credit for it? Are you are you serious? Yeah. It, it's going to click on. You, you should feel it. Probably perfected it. Oh, maybe perfected it. Yeah. I don't know. It's really not a, a very complicated thing. It just has a heat exchanger, a compression, or a compression valve, or a uh, expansion valve in it. Just make something really cold and all the heat will go away. Yeah. Well. Hopefully, uh, you could stop being ex 
you know, down south they do this. They do a lot of this down south. And when they do it in certain towns, it's called the friendliest, it's, it's called the friendliest town in, because they're all waving. <laughs> they're all waving. It's the friendliest town in the south, you know. All right, uh, Father, bless now the lesson. Uh, nourish us, strengthen us. And give us this morning a good and a better understanding of even what took place yesterday and last night in Butler, that uh, we can understand that a little more and apply it, what took place there, be able to apply that to our lives now. In Christ's name, amen. It's written about 57 AD, written from Philippi. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2, verses 12 to 13. If we go there, furthermore, when I came to trust to preach Christ's gospel, and the door was open unto me of the Lord. I had no rest in my uh, spirit because I found not Titus my brother, but taking my leave of them, I, I went from thence unto Macedonia. Now it doesn't mention Philippi there, but seven, uh, five verses, uh, let's turn there, five through 11. I think this is where uh, Titus shows up. Come into Macedonia, I guess the assumption is from Philippi. Uh, this is where, the, where he is, for, this fellow is forgiven. Why don't we just bring it up right now? Uh, let, go to verse 8, that's 2 Corinthians 7, verse 8. For though I made you sorry with a letter, he, he really chews them out in 1 Corinthians because they didn't church this fellow. I do not repent. Though I did repent. Uh, repent means to change his mind. I did not change my mind. He was, he was, uh, I did the right thing by throwing him out. Though I did repent. In other words, he asks to come back. He changes his mind and lets him, lets him come back in. For I perceive that the same epistle, which is, epistle means letter, uh, hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season, only for a little while, now I rejoice not that ye were made sorry, but that ye, that ye sorrowed to repentance, for ye were made sorry. That was the whole church. After a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. So he didn't want to dis hurt them in any way. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented on. But sorrow of the world maketh, worketh death. Okay, godly Sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Uh, we'll, go, we'll go back to that uh, verse 10. For behold, the selfsame thing that you sorrowed after a godly sort, that carefulness, is, it, wrought, carefulness it wrought in you. Yea, what clearing of yourself. <laughs> The idea is that it, they bring him in. Let's go back to that verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Did. Did Peter do wrong when he, when he uh, denied Christ three times? Oh, yeah. And did he go out weeping? Oh, yeah. Did Judas do wrong? We'll use these two guys. Did Judas do wrong? Uh, he did wrong. <laughs> was he sorry about it? Uh, yes, he was. He came back and threw that money. He said, I, I betrayed the innocent blood. He throws the money down. He goes out and hangs himself. They both do wrong. I would run to this verse then to prove the two. there's two repentances. One was a godly repentance. That's Peter. The other was a worldly repentance. One goes to heaven. The other went to hell. So there's two types of repentance. Uh... Where, where was I in chapter 7? Godly, uh, verse 10, Godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, 
In other words, he got res Peter got restored, not to be repented of. And when we say salvation, we, we're probably not talking about the salvation of the person's soul, getting restored. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. He was sorry, but man, he, he, he probably got sorry. He was sorry. When do people get really sorry? Boy, I, 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 I'm really sorry. When did it bring down the strap? What, when they get caught. Judas was caught with his hand in the cookie jar. He became real sorrowful. Sorry they got caught. And so uh, there's two types of different kinds of changing of one's mind. One, one it brings restoration. The other one, it, it's, it's, it's a tough break, buddy. And so I would go. I would. I would use that and, and go to those verses for that. All right. It's written from Philippi. Uh, Paul was in poor health. Uh, I. If we go to verses eight and nine of First uh, Second Corinthians chapter one. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, uh, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we were spared even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raised the dead. All right, they were pressed above strength. They, they were despaired even of their life. So as their uh, uh, it's either his health or they were in danger. Uh, by the way, are we in danger? I mean, they're not breaking in our house saying uh, repent or recant or else. It's not like the dark ages. It's recant or else. If you didn't recant, what did they do with you? They put you on the rack. They put you in the, uh, uh, the thumb screws. And uh, to recant, what did you have to do? What did the Romans make you do? And when I say the Romans, I mean the Catholics. They made you, you, you had to accept that, that that host was the body of Christ. Otherwise, they'll, they'll take us and all the rest of them, they, they have a, a bonfire. And, and by the way, if, if you want to have a nice bonfire, you need hay, you need a wagon full of hay, you need some lumber. You need to make a nice big pile of it. Who supplied the, who supplied the material for the bonfire? Anybody know? Did the government supply it? Anybody know who supplied the materials for the bonfire? The victim. Well, since you're dying anyway, we'll take all your lumber, all your hay. <laughs> we'll have a bonfire. Yeah, they'd burn them at the stake. And they would be singing hymns. How could they physically be able to do that, sing hymns? I was never burned at the stake, so I, I can't vouch for it firsthand. But why would they be able to do that? They would scream at the beginning. They'd be screaming and hollering. Because after your skin is burned off, there's no more feeling left. So all those nerve endings are gone. You can't feel the flames anymore. And so then they're able to witness and preach and, and, and start singing hymns because all your nerve endings are destroyed. So you can't feel the flames anymore. Awful. It's awful. Just imagine, in the name of God, we're going to burn you. <laughs> just, just crazy. Crazy. All right. Um, uh, he, he calls them, uh, brethren, I, I would not have you to be ignorant. Uh, Paul writes, if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. In, uh, I think it's 2 Peter about the flood, they were what kind of ignorant? Anybody know it, it? Willingly ignorant. They know the truth, but they're willingly ignorant of it. They don't want to admit it. And so Paul also writes, if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Uh, my one preacher interpreted it this way. If you, want to st if you want to be stupid, stay stupid. That's how he interpreted it. And so the, these people deny the flood. They, they deny all this stuff. There's deniers. Didn't you just meet a denier? Somebody was, they didn't believe in God. 
They're just ignoramuses, and they're under every rock. They're under every rock. Just go preach at a funeral. The moment at the end you start preaching about Jesus, just watch the... Generally, see, I'm the one that sees everybody's face. You're watching me. Just, just preach a funeral, man. You'll see that this, the, the countenance of the face of the people just change in the droves, man. They don't want to hear about it. All right, he was in poor health or he was in danger, and he sent Timothy to Corinth uh, with, Paul sends uh, Timothy to make the delivery. There's two preachers. Uh, we call them the Pauline epistles. Uh, the, no, I'm sorry, the pastoral epistles. There's Timothy and there's Titus. And Titus is the one that Christ, the Christians are always liars, all, all way liars, evil be slow bellies. This witness is true, therefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. <clears throat> now, and, and this may sound racist, let it be. Paul writes it. Whole races of people are like this. It's their culture, it's the way they are. Just, you wonder why, why society is the way it is? It, it's because that's the way they are. Uh, I've talked to missionaries where the, it, it, the most popular in the tribe is the best liar. <laughs> the Christians are all, all way. It's not all, all ways, it's all way. It means at all times, everything they say, Everything they say, any way they say it, at all times of the day, they lie. That's, that's what they do. The Christians are always liars. He, and he calls them evil beasts. Uh, here, uh, he calls them beasts at Ephesus, and, they call, and, and is also brute beasts. He, he calls them no better than an animal. They're a beast. It, it, it's, it's not politically correct, but... There's going to be a whole lot of uh, political correctness blown out the door when, when this all come, finally comes out. And it, it, either you accept it or don't accept it. Right? But that's what he calls them. They're no better than an animal. Than an animal. They're like animals. Like I told you about that guy, they captured him when he was 12. He said it took three days. Three days. They got on the cattle car. They were sent off to Auschwitz. They march them in. He said, in three days, they were animals. Animals. And there was a certain time of the year they did not like. It's when the sun is low in the horizon. That means winter's coming. He was there five years. Five years. Marching them all off into the gas chamber. And, all. and that's just... That's just the Jews, let alone the war itself. Oh. So I knew men from both sides. You know, they, if you were a, prison, a German prisoner, you were lucky if you came to America and were, was a prisoner here. You were, you were fortunate. Anyway, um, uh, he was sent to... Uh, received this report from Titus. Uh, the idea here is the, the harsh letter that, that was sent in 1 Corinthians had served its purpose. The people repented for putting up with the nonsense that was going on in the church. Uh, 1 Corinthians is mostly doctrinal. 2 Corinthians is mostly personal. It is, all right, if we skip down here uh, for key words that are in the book in 2 Corinthians, the word comfort is used 19 times. Ministry, to minister to people is 18 times. If you go to the first chapter, first, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, it's used 10 times. Already 10 Excuse me, in verse 3, as a preacher, I color code this. I, I highlight it. So it's used, comfort used once. In verse 4, it's comforteth, comfort, comfort, and comforted four times. In verse 5, it's called consolation, is to com meaning to comfort. 
Verse 6, it's used uh, three times, consolation, comforted, and consolation. In verse 7, it is called consolation. So it's ten times in just the first chapter. Uh, one preacher put it this way. Timothy was to... Pre oh, and let, we'll get back to Timothy and Titus. Timothy uh, was to be uh, instant in season and out of season. Whether or not he had an upset stomach or not, he is to preach. You know, if he didn't feel like preaching, tough break, you're called to this preach. In, instant, be ready, in season and out of season. You, you got good days and bad days. And so, uh, well, I'm getting like Biden. I lost my train of thought. Uh, Timothy... Well, let's get back to Timothy and Titus. What's the difference, because I brought up this thing about Titus, to rebuke them sharply. When you read Timothy and you read Titus, how do you perceive the men that he, Paul is writing to? Not all preachers are created equal. Who is the nicer of the two? Timothy or Titus? Timothy is the nicer guy. Oh, I, I know. It, it says that he is to reprove, rebuke, and exhort. That's what he says to Timothy. Repru reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering. So there's three kinds of preaching. To reprove, what did I say? Reprove, rebuke. Reprove is a mild, uh, is a mild warning. Rebuke is a major one, and exhortation is more the comforting side. So we, we were under a preacher that would say, I have to preach, of three types of sermons, I have to preach negative out of three, tw two times, negatively twice, and positively only once out of every three sermons. Two of them, you hate me. One of them, you might like me. When we when we told a, 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 a couple that we were going we're going to go to a Baptist church, this is when we were we were Mennonite. And I said we're we're going to go to a Baptist church, and I named the church off. And the guy laughed because he was out of a Baptist church. He laughed and he said, "Oh, get ready because you're going to feel real guilty." <laughs> I'll never forget that. Remember that? He said, "You're going to leave that church feeling real, real guilty." This is 35 years ago. This is a long time ago. But they would, they'll use that, where Timothy says, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all of suffering. So it's two negatives to one positive. I never followed those rules. We preach what God puts, what God says to preach. So, but of the two preachers, Timothy is the nicer one, and Titus is more the abrupt um, kind of, Yay and nay, let your yay be yay, your nay nay, and more abrupt preacher. Is when you read the two books, you, you get that impression of how it's addressed and, and the flavor of it as, as you read them. All right, so the one is uh, mostly doctrine. And by the way, Paul's, Paul's books run this way. The beginning of a book is very doctrinal. In other words, where we get our doctrine from. At the end of his books, they become very personal, where he's, he's uh, trying to encourage the people in, in addressing people by name and so on. Uh, the book of Galatians uh, is the defense of the gospel. He, uh, Paul uh, def, uh, defends that, in, this is number eight here, the book of 2 Corinthians where we're, at, we're at, where we're at is the defense of Paul's personal character. Because they were saying uh, that Paul wasn't called. So if we go to 2 Corinthians 10.10. 10, for his letters say they are weighty and powerful. So when he writes his letter, he's, he's pretty aggressive there. But his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. So he's, he's trying uh, to defend the way he is. And 11.6, uh, 
But though I be rude in speech, and I had a preacher, uh, though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been uh, thru thruly, truly made manifest among you in all things. He would, he, I had a preacher, he would interpret rude of speech. I Meaning you could say vulgar words from the pulpit, man, I just, I finally took the guy aside privately. And I said, all the bad words my, my kids ever learned, that they ever learned, they never went to, they only went to public school for one year, that was a disaster. And I said, the only, only way my kids had ever learned any bad words was from you. He would, he would say vulgar things. And that's where they learned it from. Now, a after I said that to him, I, did, I, I said that, I brought it to his attention. And uh, he stopped it after that. He, he never did it. I don't ever remember him doing it again after that. But I brought it to his, he interpreted the root of speech as, as giving him license to say four letter words. It was weird. It was weird. That, uh, uh, that evil communication should never uh, be uttered. It, it just shouldn't. There's no, there's no place for it. There's no place for it. But that's, what, that's, that's how he interpreted it. But after I brought it to his attention, it never happened. Oh, now, we read here in the beginning that a door was open for him to preach the gospel. There are doors in the world. <clears throat> and when the door opens, when the barn door opens, we'll go in. God gives you opportunities, men and women both, opportunities. And they may not be, the, the opportunity he gives you is not the opportunity he gave me. And so, and, and vice versa, it could be different opportunities. One of my instructors uh, in, in the institute, said, he said this, Fellas, we're all different. Everybody in this room is different. He, he said this. I always took it to heart. He said, lean on a few doors. He said, don't go through a window. Don't force your way through. But lean on a few doors. He said, a door might open. But don't force your way in, but lean on it. And the, the door may open. And so he's given, like we, we've said before when we did the gifts in uh, First Corinthians, we all have different gifts and different talents. Uh, Joseph of Arimathea, I mean, he's recorded in the Bible. What did he do? What did he do? He only did one thing. He went and begged for the body of Jesus and uh, took the body down. That's all. That, he took it down and let him borrow the tomb. What, wasn't it his tomb? Yeah. And let it, he, you know, I'll let you borrow my tomb for, for three days and three nights. Right? By the way, was was Jesus in there for three days and three nights? Yeah. No. I have to say no. I don't. I don't think he was in there for three days and three nights. He got. He was in hell. Now we might say bodily he was there. Bodily, he, and he didn't. By the way, he didn't come out the door of the tomb. Maybe the body was there, but is pardon. And I, yeah, you know what? His body was changed. He was in hell preaching down there, and, and, and the great gulf was there. And Well, what was he preaching? He probably looked across the great gulf and said, Fellas, you lost, we won. And he takes captivity captive. All those Old Testament saints go up. And a lot of those illustrations are given in um, Clarence Larkin's books. Uh, do we have Clarence Larkin's books in the... In the uh, in the building, I don't think we do. But if you get, there's reprints that are done from the Philippines, and they'll give all those charts. That was all done about 1900, 1905, and, you, and it really makes it really clear how all that how that took place. But why did why did the angel remove the stone? The women couldn't do it. The angel showed up and he removes the stone. He rolls the stone away. Why did he roll the stone away? He didn't roll it away to let Jesus out. It was to to prove that Jesus wasn't there. Jesus didn't have to go through there. He'd go through walls. When he went, and by the way, when did he come out of that grave? Six o'clock at night. That's when the Jewish day begins. 
which would have been the start of their, their uh, of what would have been our Sunday morning, was the end of their Sabbath, is when he came out. Uh, we, we do, we, do uh, we used to have lessons and we'd have charts. Well, we don't preach Good Friday, we preach Good Wednesday. Good Wednesday. All right, all right. Mostly Dr. Uh, chapter 12, verse 23. Verses 11 and 12. I have become a fool in glory. Be, uh, you have not I have to have been doing nothing behind. Oh, okay. Uh, for in nothing am I behind the very chiefest of apostles. All right. One of the requirements to be an apostle was to have seen the risen Christ. And he saw him on the road to Damascus. Acts chapter 9. Though I be nothing, truly the signs of an apostle, there, there's like a half a dozen signs for an apostle, were wrought among you in all patience and signs and wonders and mighty deeds. So you had to perform signs, wonders, and mighty deeds too. You had to do that. Uh, it just gave a jump start to the church. All of those gifts are gone. Gone. Uh, for, for today. All right. Paul... His name is changed from Saul to Paul. Paul means little. Saul means great one. So Saul's name is now changed to Paul. What, what main thing, in fact, that's the very first thing on our prayer list, uh, under the spiritual list for praying. And, and what does that teach us? Humility is always remember this Christianity is a fight for the bottom, not a fight for the top. A humble heart, a humble spirit. That's what Christianity is. A fight for the bottom, not to be, not to be top dog. Isn't there a movie called Top Gun? Is there one called Top Gun? I, I, Folks, if it's not in black and white, the wife and I aren't white watching it. You know? It's got to be black. We're not into all that new nonsense, you know, top, top gun. But it's a fight for the bottom, not a fight for the top. Uh, in fact, let's go to uh, Acts. Let's, let's finish up here. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. Where Paul is, sees the light. Okay, it says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. By the way, who's being saved at this time? Jews or Gentiles? Jews are. Jews are being saved. So that, there's where his name is. If we go to Ephesians 3.8... Ephesians 3.8. Uh, Unto me who am less than the least of all saints. So already he's, he's very humble when he's saying those kind of things. Is the grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Okay, so he's calling him, he's humbled himself that he's the least of all the saints. He's not some big great one. He's he's uh, he's he's a, a minor league player. Minor league player. Uh, all right. Other than the book of Revelation, Second Corinthians has the only reference to God as the Almighty in the New Testament. Uh, and we did not, 10 times, nine times in Revelation. Uh, in fact, let, let's, let's look at that. We'll look at it in Revelation. Uh, if we go to uh, 2 Corinthians 6.18. I, I have that, I, I hand write that. I don't know why it was never printed in here. Second. Uh, Corinthians 6.18 
And I don't, oh yeah. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So the Lord Jesus Christ is referred to the Lord Almighty there. If we go to Revelation 1, not the four horsemen of the apocalypse, but chapter 1. Verse 8, where he, uh, I would assume this is the first place, if it's, if it's ten times, nine times in the book of Revelation, this is one of those nine times. I am Alpha and Omega, all right, beginning and end. The beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, all right, so he's in existence, which was, he came, was crucified, rose again, ascended, which is and which was and which is to come. So he's coming back and refers to himself the Almighty. The Almighty. Who else is going to be which is, which was, and which is to come? Devil. Satan, the great counterfeiter. He's going to do the same thing. Anything that Jesus did, that's how he fools the people. He's going to do the same thing. Antichrist has got to be killed. He's got to be buried. He's got to come back to life again. All that, all that stuff's in, in the Bible. It's going to happen. Uh, uh, oh, and Joe brought this up the other day. What's the four uh, colors of the, of, I'll just throw this out. The four colors for the four horsemen. The white horse. Then comes the red horse. Then comes the black horse. And then comes the pale horse. I, and when you're so sick, you're pale, you're described as pale what? Green. Pale green. You're pale green. What are the four colors of, of Hamas's, the Palestinians' flag? White, red, black, Hamas, and green. Wow. Is that weird? Huh? have those four colors. That weird. Right? So you'll be they'll be pale green, that's the green. But there are all those four colors. Every every one of them. Father bless now the preaching in Christ's name. Amen.